assalamu alaikum in today's lecture we shall talk about uh, torque induced in a loop of uh, wire placed in a magnetic field created by curved pole faces uh, this uh, uh, will also demonstrate the working principle of uh, actual uh, real DC motors we have already talked about this arrangement uh, in previous lecture where we had a derived expression for voltage induced in a coil rotating in a magnetic field this arrangement consists of a uh, uh, magnetic field created by uh, curved pole poles here is north pole and the south pole the pole faces are not flat rather these are curved inside these uh, pole faces there is a uh, rotor uh, with made up of ferromagnetic material it is a cylindrical rotor and on this cylindrical rotor we have placed a rectangular coil now this uh, rectangular coil is connected to a voltage source through a resistor and a switch when this switch is closed current will start flowing in the uh, the in the in the coil this coil is a rectangular coil uh, of this shape uh, let's also name the sides of this coil so let's call this side a b uh, which is over here the side a uh, a b and side b c which is at the back end and side c d which is this uh, conductor and uh, this b a which is at the front uh, this arrangement, this curved pole faces uh, and cylindrical rotor, uh, this uh, causes a uniform magnetic field. This air gap is constant and therefore we have a, a uniform magnetic field. Uh, if I sketch the front view of this diagram, we have this situation. We have uh, this north pole and the south pole. Flux lines flow from the north pole to the south pole and these flux lines follow the shortest reluctance path so flux lines uh, flow from the north pole to the south pole and these follow the shortest reluctance path this perpendicular distance is the shortest distance from this pole to the rotor and therefore this uh, will have shortest uh, lowest reluctance and hence flux lines will follow this path Uh, the effect uh, will be that these flux lines will always be perpendicular to the surface of this rotor and uh, this coil is uh, placed uh, like this one uh, here is the front side of the coil and these conductors uh, are into the page into the surface of this board cannot be shown in this 2D figure and uh, let's uh, denote them by small circles uh, over here and the back end of this coil is not visible over here we want to derive an expression for torque induced in this machine when this uh, switch is closed current will start flowing through these conductors and we know that a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field experiences a force that force is given by this relation f induced is equal to i which is the current in the conductors and l cross b where b is the flux density vector and l is the length vector its magnitude is equal to the effective length of the conductor and its direction is the same as direction of current in the conductor and uh, torque uh, is related with force by this relation torque is the uh, perpendicular distance multiplied by uh, for, uh, cross product of perpendicular distance and force which is r f sin theta let's analyze uh, each conductor separately when the switch is closed uh, the current uh, current will start flowing in this direction and uh, that is 
uh, in this direction in this conductor from B to C that is into the page uh, therefore this current is denoted by this cross over here and it will be coming out from here so can be denoted by this dot in this conductor so let's first uh, talk about this conductor AB uh, therefore force induced in segment AB FAB is the force induced in segment AB that is equal to uh, I L cross B uh, what is uh, L? L is into uh, if we talk about this conductor this is L coming out uh, of the surface of board and B is towards right so L cross B uh, these are L and B are perpendicular so L cross B is simply equal to L multiplied by B and the direction of the force uh, is if we rotate L in the direction of B so force is upwards so it is simply equal to I L B and the direction of force is this one that is it will tend to rotate the rotor in counterclockwise direction and the torque due to this segment torque AB that is equal to R F sin theta so this is uh, uh, R and this is F both are perpendicular so R F sin theta is simply equal to R F and hence torque is equal to R I L B after a while this conductor would have rotated to new position and uh, for example uh, at this position that's me let me sketch this new position over here the conductor would have moved to this location and uh, again what we can see is that the, this is a direction of flux lines and uh, Again, L is perpendicular. This is direction of B. This is direction of L. So L is perpendicular to B, and L cross B is again uh, this force is in this direction, tangent to this uh, surface of the rotor. Uh, this will be the direction of force corresponding to this new position of the uh, rotor. Uh, and uh, again the same uh, torque will be produced by the uh, this uh, uh, conductor uh, when this conductor moves to this location uh, this force will be zero because flux density over here is zero because uh, this uh, this is not under influence of the poles flux density is zero and uh, torque induced will be equal to zero so induced torque due to this conductor is in counterclockwise direction uh, and it is equal to R I L B when conductor is under pole phase and zero when this conductor is beyond pole phase this torque is in counterclockwise direction let's now determine the torque induced due to this segment force due to segment BC so this segment BC is lying like this one at the back end and uh, therefore and the direction of the current in this segment is in this direction current is flowing from C to B so this is for this segment BC this is direction of L and what is direction of B? B is also in this direction. Both L and B are parallel. L and B are parallel. So L cross B is simply equal to zero. And uh, therefore the torque due to this segment that is also equal to zero. Now let's uh, see the situation for uh, this segment uh, CUD uh, force uh, due to this segment CUD the current uh, direction of L is into the surface of board and this is direction of B 
both are perpendicular to each other so L cross B is simply equal to L into B and direction of force rotate L in the direction of B so L cross B is downwards in this direction this is FCD and FCD is again simply equal to I L B and torque due to this segment is equal to uh, R uh, R is perpendicular to force so R cross F is simply R into F F is I L B so R I L B when conductor is under pole phase and zero when conductor is beyond pole phase and the direction of induced torque that is uh, it will again tend to rotate this rotor in counterclockwise direction counterclockwise direction similar to the case of this segment we can analyze uh, the uh, situation corresponding to different positions of conductor we shall see that this uh, R will always be perpendicular to force therefore R plus F will always be equal to R I L B next uh, we talk about uh, this segment of the conductor similar to the discussion carried out over here we can uh, conclude that this force due to segment A D that is equal to zero and hence the torque due to this segment is also equal to zero the total torque induced by the coil that is equal to sum of all the torques so this uh, torque due to this force and torque due to this force both tend to rotate this rotor in counterclockwise direction therefore uh, the total torque is the sum of the two torques and is given by this expression so total torque is 2RILB when conductors are under pole faces and 0 when these conductors are beyond pole faces that is when these conductors are at this location and the direction of induced torque is uh, torque is a vector its direction is out of the board that is it will tend to rotate the rotor in counterclockwise direction now, now we would like to rewrite this expression in a form which is uh, more convenient when we shall be talking about uh, real DC motors. Similar to our, the, our discussion carried out in previous lecture, uh, what we see is that uh, flux is related with flux density by this relation where A uh, total flux is equal to flux density multiplied by area where this area is the perpendicular area so uh, here are the flux lines uh, uh, these are the flux lines how we can calculate total flux multiply this flux uh, density with the perpendicular area so it is uh, the situation is like this one we have a cylindrical rotor and flux lines are flowing like this one this one this one so perpendicular area is uh, uh, this area of uh, surface area of half cylinder the total area surface area of cylinder as discussed in previous lecture is uh, this length which is 2 pi r and uh, this uh, uh, depth which is L that is a total area surface uh, area if I cu cut it uh, open from here it will be like this one and uh, this total length is 2 pi r and this length is L so this uh, surface area area of this surface of cylindrical rotor is 2 pi r L and half of this area is area per pole half area is under this pole and half of area is under this pole total flux is uh, flux density multiplied by area per pole therefore this relation torque induced which is given by 2 r i l b if i multiply 
this whole extra expression by pi and divided by pi so uh, this area is pi r l so pi multiplied by r multiplied by l this is area per pole multiplied by flux density is total flux in the machine so that is 2 over pi uh, multiplied by flux multiplied by current in the machine uh, when these conductors are under pole faces then this is the induced torque when conductors are beyond pole faces then induced torque is equal to zero so in this simple DC machine induced torque depends upon the total flux in the machine the current which is flowing in the machine uh, and uh, the constant the same is the situation for real DC machines in real DC machines total torque induced torque that also depends upon total flux in the machine current flowing in the machine and it depends upon a constant uh, which will depend upon the construction of that particular machine